So hi everyone, uh, and welcome to this video on the two period uh, consumption model. Uh, we're basically going to uh, resume where we left off uh, before. So um, in the two period model, uh, you, we, we sort of derived uh, what the optimal consumption is uh, for the present and for the future, uh, in this case, for the first and the second period. And uh, we showed how to sort of compute those values by using a Lagrangian and plugging it into the, the order equation and then plugging it into the constraint. Uh, in this video, we'll just explore a couple of properties related to that. So um, just to sort of recap, we got that a C star is equal to um, one. Uh, so it's uh, Y over, uh, if I spread this around, right, that's legal. That's y over one plus beta squared times one plus r, okay? Plus uh, y prime over one plus beta squared times one plus r times uh, one plus r, okay? And uh, I can simplify that as y over one plus beta squared times one plus r, okay? Uh, plus y prime over uh, 1 plus r plus uh, beta squared times 1 plus r squared, okay? So um, uh, the question is asking, how does an increase uh, in future income okay, affect the current consumption, okay? And um, so if we sort of want to find that out, we have to take the derivative of c star with respect to y prime. So if we do that, okay, there is no y prime here. In the first term, so that's zero. So it's going to be zero plus. Uh, we have a y prime here. Then we're going to use quotient rule. That's going to be um, a derivative of the one on top. That's one. Okay, minus um, uh, one times copy the bottom. One plus r plus beta squared times one plus r squared. Minus uh, you have here. Uh, copy the top y prime, then derivative of the bottom with respect to y prime, that's zero. Divide both sides by the denominator squared. Squared. So you're left with um, uh, one plus r plus a beta squared times one plus r uh, squared divided by that uh, quantity squared uh, so we have this one. So this will obviously simplify to something a little bit more simple. Squared, squared. So this cancels out. And I'm going to be left with 1 over, okay, 1 plus r plus beta squared times 1 plus r right, squared. Right, and of course, this is greater than 0, right? Because r is positive, beta is positive, r is positive. So that is true, right? So this is due, this is due to the uh, uh, convexity of preferences and also uh, the monotonicity. Tonicity of preferences, right? So again, the goal of the agent is to smooth consumption out through time. And of course, if they expect that their future income will increase, okay, they will consume more as well in the present, okay, depending, of course, on the value of beta by how much, but it will be a positive amount, right? Because that smooths consumption more and more into the future. Okay. Next, suppose now we have these values, okay, beta times one plus r is equal to one, r is equal to 0.3 y is equal to 0.7 and y prime is equal to 11. We're asked what is saving. So if you recall, we derived the Euler equation as this equation. And uh, uh, in this particular model, okay, we sort of deduced that um, this was sort of the end result given the functional form. So uh, we know that uh, C prime, okay, so we know that uh, C prime is equal to beta times one plus R squared C, which is just beta squared times one plus R uh, squared, right? Uh, C, C prime. 
uh, then from here, here, since uh, beta times one plus r is equal to one, okay, notice this one, we can rewrite it as just this, right? Beta times one plus r, beta times one plus r, right? And that will be squared because I multiply the two of them times c. But uh, this is equal to one, this is also equal to one. Therefore, c prime is equal to c, right? So uh, just to note, okay, if okay, beta times one plus r is equal to one, okay, we sometimes refer to this as the Euler condition, condition, uh, and this is the case of perfect, okay, perfect consumption smoothing. Consumption smoothing. Okay, that is consumption doesn't change. It's the same throughout time, at least in these two periods. So um, because of this, okay, we know that C prime is equal to C. Then we use the intertemporal, we use the budget constraint, the intertemporal budget constraint. So recall that that C plus C prime over one plus R equal to Y plus Y prime over one plus R. Okay, we have C as an unknown right? And we also have C prime, which is an unknown, right? But we know that it's equal to C divided by one plus R. So that's divided by 1.3, right? Equal to Y. Y here is given as, uh, sorry, this is not 0.7. This is seven, seven plus uh, Y prime is 11 divided by 1.3, right? And uh, we can factor it out. So we get C times one plus 1.3 equal to um, seven plus 11 divided by 1.3. And uh, if we solve for C, so we do seven plus 11 over 1.3 divided by one plus one over 1.3. And uh, if we solve this, we get uh, 8.7 three nine one three oh four three therefore okay savings is uh so s star is equal to um y minus c so y in this case in the first period is equal to seven right minus this term here is eight point seven three nine one three oh four three and this is going to be equal to negative 1.73913043, right? Since this is a negative value, okay, the household household borrows, right? Because uh, in the first period, they consumed more than they were endowed with, so they must have borrowed to finance that consumption, okay? So the last question is, assuming the same parameter values, suppose that borrowing is completely forbidden, what is the optimal C and C prime now? Well, that's sort of simple, you know, uh, it's just an intuitive answer. Given that we found out that the optimal savings is basically a negative number, that is the household will borrow, okay? The um, household was supposed to borrow, household was supposed to borrow, right to borrow but uh since it's forbidden forbidden okay we'll just choose okay choose um c star is equal to y is equal to seven and uh, uh c prime star is equal to y prime is equal to 11. So the best thing that the household can do is just consume what they were given with because optimally we found out that it's probably the case that they're going to borrow. And if we shut down borrowing, then the best that they can do, the best alternative is to just consume what they were endowed with in each period because saving would uh, reduce their utility further. So that's it for the two-period model. Uh, in the next video, we'll go through the multi-period model uh, in detail. So thank you for your attention, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.